Yes, you are welcome to today's class. Now, I want us to work on this particular design as somebody requested in the class. So I think I should quickly show us how we can create it. Now, the first thing you have to pay attention to looking at the design, you'll find out that the width, because by the time you want to create design, you have to understand what the width looks like. Now, for this particular design, as you can see on the screen, is as wide as one inch. I mean the strap, the one at the front here, the one at the front right here is as wide as one inch. And you'll find out that each and every other strap, even the one that went this way and the one that came this way, is, a, is actually the same width with this. So please, I want us to first of all look at that. Each time you see a design, pick up your tape roll, begin to look at it. Okay, this is as much as, okay, if you can even increase it. Oh, is it not looking too wide? Those are the simple, simple ways in which you can know the width to use when you want to work with any design. So please, you have to first of all, pay attention to that. If you are not sure of what the width is, probably you're working on a design, send it to the class. I'll look at it and both of us will work, work on it together. So, but for this, I'm going to suggest that we use one inch or one quarter of an inch. So one quarter of an inch is from this side to this side, then this is quarter of an inch. This is quarter from this one to this particular place where my hand is, is one over four of an inch. So this is the width we'll say we are working with if we want to use this. It's either you use one quarter of an inch or you use just one inch. So from here, this is one to two is just an inch. So that is basically what we are going to use. And if you don't want to use it in inch, you can decide to use 2.5 centimeter. 2.5 centimeter is, up, is, is the equivalent of just one inch. So it means that it's either you use your one inch or you can decide to use 2.5 centimeter. So if you are not using 2.5 centimeter, you can decide to use three centimeter. For example, probably you want yours to be a little bit wider. So if we are considering three centimeter, this is three from one, two, three. So it means it will be this wide just a bit wider than the one inch, which is 2.5 inch. So I'm just trying to teach us how to work with this particular measuring tape. Now let's go to this. The first thing I want you to pay attention to is this width. And as I've said, the width we are going to be using two, one inch or 2.5 centimeter as the case may be, or three centimeter. It depends on you. I'm just giving you different measurements that you can actually use. But for this particular class, I'm going to make use of 2.5 centimeter, which is the equivalent of one inch. Now, I am going to, of course, you need whatever this side is. For me, my tape rule, I remove that iron part because it tends to be, you know, creating confusion when I'm using it. So I don't want to mislead any of my students. So let's say the front part now is seven, seven and a half. Don't forget I've added allowance. And my own seven and a half, please, don't forget my tape rule started from one. So my seven and a half is your own six and a half inch. If you pick up ruler, because we can look at it together. You see, this is the, this is this. The, from here to here is one, two, three, four, five, six, and six and a half. So please don't get confused about my measuring tape. Please don't get confused. I did not start from a zero. You can see that it still has some other measurements. I didn't start from, I started from one. So that is why I counted these two as one, two, three, four, five, six and a half. So it means we are going to have six and a half. 6.5 is the same thing as six and a half inch and then 2.5 centimeter uh, sorry um one inch let's use one inch i need to change my paint one inch we are going to make use of one inch for the width so don't forget that this tie the front part has a strap that same strap came this way so we are creating a t so it is one strap a then another one goes this way. That is the same one that will be folded in. If you look at the design, it is the one that we are folding in that the cuff is going to be inside. As we continue, I'm sure you will get what I'm trying to explain. So now, considering the strap that will be coming this way, I mean, you know, I said we are creating a T for the, for the strap in front and the one that is going to fold over. So for this particular lens, don't forget we already have one inch, which is for the width. Now, the, 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 the width of our curve pattern too is going to be one inch, which means for the length of our T, now we are going to have one inch, which is part of the strap. Let me try to draw what I'm trying to tell us. Now, it's this way and this way. Let's say this is our width. I need us to see this. Sorry, let me try to zoom it in. So, let's say this is our strap. This is the one in front. There is one that came... There's one that came this way, that came this way, that folded over this one that, that was coming like this. This one, this one went on top of this a little bit. I'm just trying to create a, a sketch. 
Don't forget, I am not an artist. I'm trying to create a sketch for us to see. And another one came this way and came this way. So to say, I'm just trying to create a, a, a sketch for us. So this particular one here, this strap in front, we are going to make sure that it has an extension this way that is going to fold over this cuff here and go and hide inside where nobody will see it. So I'm saying that this particular width, we have one inch, then plus the fold over. Don't forget that it's coming from under here to fold on top of this one. So we are going to be adding about two inch extra again because the fold, the fold, folding over this one is going to be an inch. Folding over, going under this one. Don't forget that this one is climbing on top of this. So part of it will still be here. So let's say we are adding 1.75 of an inch because of the, this one going under. Then by the time it folds over. I'm sure by the time I'm through with the design, you will fully understand what I'm explaining. By the time it folds over it and it's coming under, because it's going to go under and still go back again under, over. I mean, it will climb on top of this and then go under it just to stay behind here so that nobody will see it. So it means that we are going to have 1.75 twice of an inch. So at the end of the day, our one inch plus 1.75 plus 1.75, we are going to add it together. This is as good, this is um, 3.5, I think this is 3.5, am I correct? This is 3.5 inch, plus this one is be 4.5 inch. So it means the width we are going to calculate for this extension is going to be what? 4.5 inches. It's going to be 4.5 inches. So let's go ahead into the design now. So now what, what I have here is um one inch the width is one inch and this is 6.5 for the front don't forget that we said the remaining one is going to be four we are going to have you know a line attached to it which is 4.5 now when you want to attach a line you know very well that considering this our last from here to here is longer than from here to here and don't forget that our extension line our extension from the pattern is going to be at this particular center line so it means that you have to take cognizance of that make sure that you don't place your extension line at the center or else you may you may be having short you may short extension for the leather to go under on one side of your design although this is just the pattern by the time you place it on it and you see the error of course you can correct your pattern but if you want to do that from here you can also do that so all you need to do is locate the center by the time you locate the center just try to shift it away maybe about 0.5 inch away you understand from the center then place it so that will cover up for this and the other side the longer side will cover for all this now let's go ahead into that if you look at this if this is 6.5 what I have here is 6.5, and then when 6.5, this is 1, 2, 3. Okay, no, this is not good enough. So let me use this. Now you can see, now that, that, those are the funny, funny things about our measuring table. If you see this one now, can you see that my, my, the measurement is not even as much as for measuring tape? I use ruler to measure this. I use measuring tape for this. So we really need to watch all of these little, little things. So I'm going to just adjust it. Since I used my measuring tape to measure what I needed, so there's no reason for it to be different. So when you have, this is what I have now, 6.5. So you can decide to fold it. Just fold this way. To, just for you to locate where the center is. Oh. So I'm going to place it like this. Uh -huh. Now I know where my center is. Now when I know my center, don't forget that we have um, our width is supposed to be two point, um, two, um, 1 inch. I mean 1 inch. So it means we are going to use 0 0.5 inch towards this side, 0 0.5 inch towards inside to centralize it. Please, I want you to follow me. For you to centralize it, you cannot you cannot start from here and just measure and just measure your your um, width one inch. So normally you won't put it here and measure your. I will not just put it here and say, okay, this is my one and just put it here. No, I'm supposed to put it. I'm supposed to say from here to here is 0 0.5, 0 0.5. That is my center. If I need to put any line on the center but because we want one side to be longer than the other that is the reason why we are going to just place it on this side to measure our one inch 
I just hope we get what I'm trying to explain. So I'm going to just use this side. I'm just going to use that side. So that this side, you see it has a longer space. I need us to really see this. You see that this is this side is longer than this side. So this side will be this particular side, and the longer one will be this particular one. So now we need to draw another line here. So I would suggest that you can use your tape, your your measuring tape or whatever to know what measurement this side is. So this is about 8.5. I'm going to bring it downward and make use of 8.5 downward so that I can connect the line. I just want to use that. Sorry, I just want to use that to connect the lines, please. So I want to use it to connect it so that it will be easy for me to do whatever I want to do with it. Now we are going to go to this side. Don't forget, we have this one to be one inch. So one inch and we are going to join it together. Please, I'm taking my time because of subsequent designs that we can we, we see and we want to work on. That's why I'm taking time to explain this for us. So if you now look at this particular one now, we just need this side to be 4.5 inch. So from this edge, this is um, 4.5 here. Yeah, 4.5 here. So it means it's going to flip over that way and you are still going to be able to put whatever you want to put. But if you are not sure for a restart, you are not sure, you are just starting. What I'm going to suggest you do is this. Pick it up, trim it out and keep it, set it aside. When you are now ready to fold over, fold it over and reduce whatever is not necessary inside it. So let me follow that trend since we are just starting. So let me use that trend for us. I'm just going to trim this out and we'll go to the cuff part of the design. Now you can see this is what I have. You can see this is short Why this is long. So this is the way to be positioned. I hope we can see it. This is the way to be positioned now, just because we try to shift about 0.5 away from that side. So that is that. Let's quickly go to our curve. This is what I'm going to do for the curve. You know, I love to use my soft paper. So I'm going to try to do this. The reason I'm doing this is so that it will lay very easily on my last. I'm sure if you have watched my pattern videos, the pattern video that we have in the class, you'll find out that I do the same thing. So it will lay perfectly well. Now, before I lay it, I want you to first of all consider where will the slide where will this particular because it's a kind of interlock slide where will it end because it is where it will end for you that will determine how you want to place those material that we're going to use to create this particular curve design so for me i'm considering the fact that if you look at the design on the on on the on the screen you find out that it has a lot of space here but then on the average this is what you can use this side as the end point on the average, which is after this edge, this particular edge, you can stop there. So this is what we call the joint line. This is the joint line. I, I've already explained that in the last video I posted in the class. This is the joint line. So just a little bit away from the joint line, that's where we have the, 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 the slide ending. So you have to consider where the slide ends. So if you want your home to come a little bit lower than that, you can decide to bring it lower. It's all your choice. So let's quickly go to that. So... This is called a paper grid method. We use it to create design as well. It's a paper grid method. So you can see I'm just going to I use this paper to hold it down. And we are going to go ahead and continue. So now I always tell you get a flexible leather or wire. This is actually a welt. It's an EVA foam welt. So I just want to use it to create the design for us. You know, it's very flexible. You can get a wire cord, anything that is like flexible. So you will see what I'm going to be doing now. Now, I told us the other time that you have to consider where you want it to stop. So since we said a little bit below the joint line, that is the reason I'm positioning it like that. That's where I want it to stop. So, and 
this one is one way or the other on top of our strap of our front strap is on top i'm just trying to show us one way or the other is on top so you have to create it in such a way that is on top of it at least slightly so i'm going to remove this you can see i put edit under it edit under it so that it will be easy for me to create the curve so now since it's on top of it a little bit if you want it to come down a little bit you can allow it to come down is your choice now the way you position it will determine where you extend this curve to now look at me what i did now is already touching my t pattern that is on in front which is supposed which is the way it's supposed to look like so now let's go ahead and then continue see me creating the curve gently just follow it and create follow it gently follow it gently you can see what i'm doing do the same thing on this particular side as well i have to hide it properly so sorry for that so we are going to bring this this way so if you remove it you find out that you have created a curve whether you like it or not you have created a curve you can see it so from this curve that's where we are going to continue you can see what i have now i'm going to do two things to this particular curve i'm going to extend it downward like this and i'm going to extend it inward although i will extend the line i will also extend this now what do i mean i am going to extend inward by 0 0.5 i need you to really look at this now if you look at me this is one inch see the way i'm placing it and allowing it to align it must align or else it will not give you the shape don't just place it anyhow <laughs> your line your calibration for one must align with your line so that the shape will be well formed you can use ordinary ordinarily looking at this you can use it to extend it fine but i would suggest for you to have a uniform look and show so so i'm going to do that all around it now if you look at it i extend it this way and this way now let me try to join the lines so you can join yours like that as well just join it gently you don't have to be in a hurry when you are joining so that um, it will not be looking different so you can see what i have you have double curve I'm going to cut this out and cut this out as well. I'll, write, I'll be right back. <laughs> now, as you can see from what I have here, our designs are all ready. You can see these are the two curves and this is the T-strap. Now, I'm going to pick one of the curves. It's the one that will be here. It's the one that is coming down here. As you can see, it's the one coming down. This other one is the one that will be facing up this way. Don't forget that our T is at the center like this. It came up, no, it came under this, and then climb on top of this. If you, if you look at the design, that is this is the way it is. Let me remove it again. This is this. And this particular, the second curve is going this way. It's going on top of it this way. So before you do that, this one is going to be under it will be under the first curve it will climb on top of this can you see it climbing on top of it then go under it because they must not see it too <laughs> don't forget i was telling us that it's going to be under so they must not see it they must not see where you stopped it so from what i have here i was telling us the other time that you can use this to know what to 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 actually leave behind without folding any you know when you you, do, you are not having any excess here so if this is like this and the one on top goes this way i'm going to try to use my paper tape to hold it for us to perfectly see what it looks like so if i last it that like this 
yes yeah, sorry for that so now you can you can see what i have is looking too wide here so i'm going to try to adjust it adjust all of them appropriately although because it's a flexible paper that's why it's all around like this but with leather you should know that you have your design intact so this is what we have this is what the design is so all you need to do is just to cut this side off it means we don't need it so although we don't need it to be hooked to this place so. <laughs> so what it means is that let me reduce it for us to see now let me bring it out so you don't need it to, to get to this place i'm just going to reduce a little bit so please for this back part you can see that i have an extension here so i'm going to just go ahead and then reduce that particular side i'm going to because by the time you stitch it because you are going to be stitching it down they must not see it in front so the only option we have is we are going to stitch it around here don't forget that the one that is coming right here is going to cover it up so nobody will see what you stitched hope you get me you know one is going this way the other one is going this way so nobody will see the one you stitch they won't see it you understand they won't see it so that's how we are just going to leave it you are going to just reduce it by the time you finish stitching it then you can cut the remaining one away so you can decide to first of all at least let it be as long as this first so by the time we are through so let me see what our final length is from here now you can see it's almost five it's almost five inch although my measuring tape this is um five this is four this is three this is two this is one so it's almost up to five it's almost up to five inch so you can see now that we are at least we are correct just and by the time we finally trim it you will find out that that is what the size will be it will still result to 4.5 so we are very correct and our calculation is correct so i believe with this we should be able to create this particular pattern now there is a video in the class where i explain how to last it even using your foot yes a detailed video please i want you to go ahead and watch that i'll try to pin that under this particular video so that each time you are through with this one you can quickly go back to that and see it so i'm sure you should be able to do that you already know how to create your hopper the video is intact in the class please go and watch it so that you can know how you are going to create this hopper please now for this particular one i want you to know that you are going to line it you're going to line this side as in cut your pattern and fully line it when you fully line it then you are going to the same i'm going to suggest tell you let you know that the same you can decide to use the same leather you use for the outside for the inner part if not ensure that at least your leather all this one is your original leather till you in short the same i will suggest that you should just be careful this is going to be the leather outside when you are lining it line it full like this whatever lining you want to use let it be here as in let it be full let it full everything so it means you are cutting two of these you are creating you are cutting the inner and the main leather for this particular one and we are going to do the same thing for this and the same thing for this if you want to stitch fine if you don't want to stitch just apply gum i've already taught that those ones in the upper uh, how to create upper course so that is basically what this is all about please i want to see your practicals in the in the discussion class please it's very important let's not just be here and fold our hands this is pattern cutting i don't want to believe you don't you cannot get a pattern and create this even if you are going to start with t start with it send it to the class when later when you are ready you can use your leg for this if you don't have a last use your leg to create the cuff place your 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 what do they call it on your foot create the paper place the paper on your foot put put it like this and draw it please don't give excuse for any reason you can see just create it it's your foot it's nobody's foot if you want it to come a little bit forward push it forward you can see me then draw just like that 